Uh, you just done a presentation on water leadership, and you referred to the Fort Delft Symposium in 2007, in which there was a call for thousands um, new water leaders in Africa and Asia. Um, could you tell more about the current status? Well, thank you. Yes, that was a very important call. And uh, did that call mean that we do not have enough water experts? Not quite. There are a lot of people with education and um, technical background on water. But since in water we realize that we need an integrated approach and we also need to work in partnership among government agencies, with the private sector, with local communities, with civil society. These things are easier said than done. So it actually takes people to leave their current job to go to another organization and say, we need to work together, how shall we do that? So that requires leadership. Now, most of the people working in the water sector, they have hopefully good water education, but they're not necessarily trained or given an opportunity to expand their, their leadership ability. Uh, in fact, mostly they get that opportunity only when they enter into an executive position, like a director or a manager. Uh, what we are now saying is that people at all levels and not just in government, but also in civil society and in the private sector and in academia and universities need a chance to expand their leadership abilities so that they can more effectively influence this water management that we're looking at. And uh, during the activities of the, during the projects of the Asian Development Bank, do you see uh, an improvement compared to 2007? We see that many countries in Asia have now adopted policies and some of them have adopted updated legislation on implementing integrated water resource management, so this integrated approach. To do it is still tough and actually one of the challenges there is to actually make this cooperation, this integration happen. So there again, we need people who are not just trained in the technical aspects, um, but actually gain the self-confidence, gain the understanding of what it means how to make effective partnerships, how to persuade others for a common goal, how to formulate a common goal. Because if you work with different stakeholders in a river basin or in a city, how to manage water better, you need to sort of develop a common vision. Is that a vision that you just write up for yourself in your own room that doesn't have so much value? Could still be a good vision though. But a vision that has a chance of being implemented has to be shared by stakeholders. How do you do that? How do you actually develop a shared vision? You don't learn that in, 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 in your normal water master's program. So, so here again it points to opportunities, additional opportunities for people to not just have their in-depth technical knowledge, which is very important, but also to become a leader. So there's a, uh, you know, you could think of it as uh, various types of training that you can benefit from is pouring more water into your own glass. But being a leader means actually becoming a bigger glass and then also filling it. So that's the kind of attitude and ability that will make a difference by getting people to work together for this um, more sustainable world that we're looking for. And what uh, what role can this uh, symposium play in this process? Well, actually, in the preparation of this symposium, several people uh, have already started preparing initiatives um, that would uh, be announced at the end of this symposium for new programs and new initiatives. Uh, one such program, a leadership development program, uh, we expect that it will be announced on the last day. We're very excited about that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we want to encourage all the participants at this symposium to see about their own personal leadership. How could they, um, with a bit more insight of what leadership means, expand their own leadership in the place where they work? Um, and also, how could we agree on standards for leadership development programs? Um, that we could use to go out and ask for funding because leadership development has a cost and it's not covered in normal organizations budgets 
So we need to persuade people to sponsor people to go through such programs. So if we agree on standards, we, it will be possible for us to get uh, private foundations, governments, development projects to say, yes, I'm willing to allocate some budget to send people to a program that I understand to be of good quality. So they can trust that the outcome will be good and their money will be well spent. Um, so we hope that from there, actually different leadership activities and programs will be developed in, in the countries uh, from which there are participants here. So let's say in Asia, that means India, China, uh, Indonesia, and we look at several regions in Africa. Now we are all meeting here, but what about catalyzing activities that take place in each of these countries so that leaders can benefit without having to travel to Delft? And uh, what practical uh, actions do you expect to come out of the workshops at the end of this symposium? Well, these workshops are, have different types of outputs. One is to challenge the knowledge we have. We have to keep learning, a continuous learning attitude. So some things we have learned are still very valuable. Other things may have worked yesterday but are not enough for tomorrow. So we have to adjust our own thinking. So, so, so symposiums like this offer you the chance to, to rub your knowledge against others and see where it falls short and where you have to um, learn more, learn new things. I personally learned from some of the young leaders here at this, uh, um, at this symposium who are looking at water challenges very differently from people uh, at a more sort of senior level in their, in their career. And that's to be expected. So, uh, by actually talking and dialoguing and doing that in a, within a good learning structure, there's a lot lots we can learn. But it it should go beyond talking and, and learning into actually enabling some actions to take place as a result of this seminar. So when uh, Minister Lydia Brito stu stood in the last session of the 2007 symposium and said, we need 1,000 water leaders to make a difference. I'm happy to say that some progress is made, but not enough. So we, we expect this symposium to result in some concrete initiatives in the form of water leadership programs that would produce more of such water leaders. In other words, help people expand their leadership ability wherever they are.